and welcome to Rose Sinister Presents Vampire Stories. Tonight, we're going to start this new series off with arguably one of the most important pieces of early Gothic romantic vampire literature, which is a poem called The Bride of Corinth, written in German in 1797 by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, or as English speakers sometimes butcher it, Goethe. based this poem off of a much earlier uh, first or second century Greek ghost story, and as many fanfic writers on Archive of Our Own have done, he said, well, that's great, but let's make it about vampires. So, uh, yeah, anytime you want to uh, get on the case of some fangirls turning their favorite J-pop boy band into vampires, just know that the very foundations of vampire literature uh, was built, basically, on that. This is one of many English translations that is available on the internet. I'm not saying that it is the best one. Um, in fact, I don't think that there is one singular best English language translation of this work. And, and the reason for that can be found in the very profound differences between the German and English languages, despite sharing a common ancestor. Uh, one of the beauties of the German language is its ability to combine words to create long, complicated words that mean very precise, very specific things. And English, quite to the opposite of that, um, has this wonderful faculty for presenting very broad, nebulous ideas in very short, concise phrases. Just do it, for instance. And so you will find many translations of this poem online. Some are more poetic than others. Some sacrifice maybe some nuance for the sake of meter and rhythm and poetry, and others choose to go the opposite route and try to keep more to the very specific attitudes presented in the poem, the very specific details, and those can sometimes get lost when you're trying to preserve the flow and the poetry of it. Um, some other innovations that uh, Goethe added to the Greek ghost story, in addition to vampires or the vampiric element, is overtones of Christianity and the conflict between the pagan and the Christian worlds in the first few centuries of the Common Era. And I find that very fascinating as well. What is in this bottle? Well, it's not wine. It's mostly vodka, to be honest with you, because in these times, we should be drinking. So, without any further ado, allow me to read you this poem, and I'll do the very best that I can, and I hope that you enjoy it. Once a stranger youth to Corinth came, who in Athens lived, but hoped that he from a certain townsman there might claim as his father's friend kind courtesy. Son and daughter they had been wont to say, should thereafter bride and bridegroom be? But can he that boon so highly prize, saved his dearly bought, now hope to get? They are Christians and have been baptized, and he and all of his are heathens yet. For a newborn creed, like a loathsome weed, love and truth to root out off will threat. Father, daughter, all had gone to rest, and the mother only watches late. 
She receives with courtesy the guest and conducts him to the room of state. Wine and food are brought, air by him besought. Bidding him good night, she leaves him straight. But he feels no relish now, in truth, for the dainties so profusely spread. Meat and drink forgets the weary youth, and, still dressed, he lays him on the bed. Scarce have closed his eyes, when a form in highs through the open door with silent tread. By his glimmering lamp discerns he now how, in veil and garment white arrayed, with black and gold band round her brow, glides into the room a bashful maid. But she, at his sight, lifts her hands so white, and appears as though full sore afraid. And Molly cries she, such a stranger here, that the guests approach they could not name. Ah, they keep me in my cloister drear. Well nigh, I feel vanquished by my shame. On the south couch now, slumber calmly thou, I'll return as swiftly as I came. Stay, thou fairest maiden, cries the boy, starting from his couch with eager haste. Here are Sarah's Bacchus, gifts of joy, armor biddest thou, with beauty grace. Thou art pale with fear, loved one, let us here prove the rapture the immortal's taste. Draw not nigh, O youth, so far remain. Rapture now can never smile on me, for the fatal step alas is tame. For my mother's sick bed fantasy. Cured, she made this oath. Youth and nature both shall henceforth to heaven devoted be. From this house so silent now are driven all the gods who reign supreme of yore. One invisible now rules in heaven. On the cross a savior they adore. Victims slay they here, neither lamb nor steer, but the altars reek with human gore. And he lists and every word he weighs, while his eager soul drinks in each sound. Can it be that now before my gaze stands my loved one on this silent ground? Pledge to me thy troth, though our father's oath with heaven's blessing will our love be crowned. Kindly youth, I can never be thine. Tis my sister they intend for thee. When I in the silent cloister pine, ah, with her arms remember me. Thee alone I love, while love's pangs I prove, soon the earth will veil my misery. No, for by this glowing flame I swear, Hymen hath himself propitious shown, let us to my father's house repair, and thou find that joy is not yet flown, sweetest. Here then stay, and without delay, hold we now our wedding feast alone. Then exchange thy tokens of their truth. She gives him a golden chain to wear, and a silver chalice would the youth give her in return of beauty rare. That is not for me, yet I beg of thee, one lock only give me of thy hair. Now the ghostly hour of midnight knelled, and she seemed right joyous at the sign, to her pallid lips the cup she held, but she drank not but blood-red wine. For to taste the bread there before them spread, not he spoke could make the maid incline. To the youth the goblet then she brought, he too quaffed with eager joy the bowl, love to crown the silent feast he sought, ah, full love sick was the stripling soul. From his prayer she shrinks, till at length he sinks on the bed and weeps without control. And she comes and lays her near the boy. How I grieve to see thee sorrowing so. If thou thinkest to clasp my form with joy, thou must learn this secret sad to know. Yes, the maid whom thou call'st thy loved one now is as cold as ice, though white as snow. Then he clasps her madly in his arm, while love's youthful might pervades his frame. Thou mightest hope, when with me to grow warm, even from the grave thy spirit came. Breath for breath and kiss, overflow of bliss. Dost thought thou, like me, fill passion's flame? Love still closer rivets now their lips. Tears they mingle with their rapture blessed. From his mouth the flame she wildly sips. Each is with the other's thoughts possessed. His hot ardor's flood warms her chilly blood, but no heart is beating in her breast. 
in her care to see that naught went wrong. Now the mother happened to draw near. At the door long hearkened she full long, wondering at the sounds that greet her ear. Tones of joy and sadness, and love's blissful madness, as of bride and bridegroom they appear. From the door she will not now remove, till she gains full certainty of this. And with anger here she vows of love, soft caressing words of mutual bliss. Hush, the cock's low strain, but thou come again. When the night returns, then kiss on kiss. Then her wrath the mother cannot hold, but unfastens straight the lock with ease. In this house our girls become so bold as to seek e'en strangers' lust to please. By her lamp's clear glow, looks she in, and oh, sight of horror, tis her child she sees. Fain the youth would, in his first alarm, with the veil that o'er her had been spread, with a carpet shield his love from harm, but she cast them from her, void of dread, and with spirit strength, in its spectral length, lifts her figure slowly from the bed. Mother, mother, does her one lips say, may I not one night of rapture share? From the warm couch am I chased away? Do I waken only to despair? It contends not thee to have driven me an untimely shroud of death to wear? But from out my coffin's prison bounds, by a wondrous fate I'm forced to rove, while the blessings and the chaunting sounds that your priests delight in useless prove. Water, salts are vain, fervent youth to chain, and e'en earth can never cool down love. When that infant vow of love was spoken, Venus' radiant temple smiled on both. Mother, thou that promise sense hast broken, fettered by a strange, deceitful oath. Gods, though, hearken nearer, should a mother swear to deny her daughter's plighted troth. From my grave to wander I am forced, still to seek the good's long-severed link, still to love the bridegroom I have lost and the lifeblood of his heart to drink. When his race is run, I must hasten on, and the young must neath my vengeance sink. Beauteous youth, no longer mayest thou live. Here must shrivel up thy form so fair. Did not I to thee a token give, taking in return this lock of hair? View it to thy sorrow, ray shall be tomorrow only to grow brown again when there. Mother, to this final prayer give ear. Let a funeral pile be straightway dressed. Open then my cell so sad and drear that the flames may give me God's rest. When ascends the fire from the glowing prior, the gods of old will hasten blessed. Again, there's lots of different versions of that that you can find in English and almost certainly in many other languages. The difficulties of translation mean that you should probably seek out multiple translations if you can and compare them. I hope to, to continue reading more vampire stories aloud to uh, all of you and put them on YouTube. If you enjoyed that, then please hit subscribe and of course the bell notification so that you never miss any new videos when I upload them. This channel is still very new, but I am looking forward to adding content as frequently as I can. Anyway, we're all on lockdown now, so I've got plenty of time to add new content, and I look forward to sharing it with you. If you want to hear me read another pre-20th century vampire story, leave that in the comments below, and tell me what you think of this one. Be kind to me. I'm still getting a hang of making these videos, and I'll be more polished in the future. But thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.